this this is not an isolated situation and this nitrogen increase and phosphorus increase is, is happening worldwide and it's um, the nitrogen increase is actually accelerating great higher faster than the increase in co2 which is causing atmospheric problems um, so it's just it's a system out of kilter and it's it's all going to come back at some point and um, it's all going to come together and it's not going to be good for the ecosystem and, and sustainable resources. The, um, when I started this, uh, we thought, you know, we'll just go see where it is and how, it, you know, how big it is and, you know, we're just was successful in getting more and more money and um, so we've had the opportunity to have this wonderful database that we can look at all kinds of changes in river discharge or nutrient flux or hurricanes or um, and been able to piece together all the correlations that tell the story about how it's formed. Um, and I think, um, I think we have um, a really strong database that shows the many processes involved. Chesapeake Bay has a good long-term data set too in it. Um, those changes started to happen in the 60s and 80s and now in other areas of the world where agribusiness is taking over and large amounts of fertilizer such as in China. There are low oxygen zones there now that didn't occur historically, but their sh their shift is a little bit later, and they're now having some of the same problems. Some of this um, atmospheric nitrogen deposition in the East China Sea is causing harmful algal blooms, and um, so it's this pattern that keeps repeating itself, and we're having more and more of these coastal areas uh, being affected. So I'm concerned. I mean, I probably wouldn't be well. This research is very interesting, but I'm also not just doing it because it's interesting, because I think it's telling an important story that we need to take to the public and policymakers and, and citizens to let them know about their changing environment.